What is going on, everybody? It is Saturday, July 4th, uh, so I hope everybody is having a great and fun 4th of July with their friends and family. Um, unfortunately, some crazy news uh, broke yesterday. Uh, Gilbert Burns is out of his title match against um, Kamaru Usman uh, for the main event at uh, UFC 251 uh, for the big... Uh, you know, what would be the uh, International Fight Week card where usually, you know, UFC likes to super stack these cards. Um, some interesting news, though. Uh, the man who should have been in the main event originally, uh, Jorge Masvidal. It seems like he's in negotiations right now to take the fight on a week's notice. And this is all kinds of crazy. All kinds of crazy. Um, you know... To me, this card, um, you know, everyone was saying it was super, super stacked because of, you know, three title fights. But historically speaking, three title fights, you know, usually is kind of a, it's kind of an indicator it's going to be a long, long night. I think the only I think the only time three title fights have worked is uh, UFC 217 with, you know, GSP, Michael Bisping, Yuan and Rose and Cody Garbrandt, TJ, uh, TJ Dillashaw. That was phenomenal. But I feel like every other time, man, it's hasn't really gone uh, the way uh, it's expected. And usually, you know, that's a matchup thing. And to me, I mean, you know, top to bottom, um, you know, Usman and Burns, you know, had the recipe for a great fight. But it definitely could have been, you know, um, uh, you know, kind of a slower fight. Um, Jose Aldo and Peter Yan definitely, you know. Uh, Jose Aldo coming down to 135, you know, in five round fights, you know, he just, his output just definitely isn't the same as in three round fights and Max Holloway and, uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, it's a great fight the first time, great fight, but, um, you know, it's a technical fight, very, very technical and for, you know, casual fans and if you're looking for like a crazy, you know, barn burner of a slugfest, definitely not, not, not what you're going to see. You're going to see some really, really high level stuff with those two, but you know, it, it, to me, it's not really the recipe for like a you know a crazy like momentum swinging back and forth fight, um, and especially now with uh, you know Max coming out saying that you know he didn't even see his coaches till they all met up at the airport to fly to to Abu Dhabi. So um, don't really know how that's gonna play out. Um, so this really kind of left a damper, uh, a really big damper on the on the card for me. But then here goes you know uh, George Masvidal, you know trying to you know come in and save the day and um ultimately this this whole thing left me with three questions um so uh the first question is you know who does this last minute fill in favor you know stylistically or historically speaking um this is a bad style matchup for jorge as a late replacement you know he in the past, it's always been the you know the larger grappler, uh, specifically wrestling, uh, wrestling heavy guys have always kind of been his detriment, um, and and not in like a overly dominant fashion. It's just they're a little bit more physical, um, and Usman is that tenfold. I mean that that's literally what he does best. And yeah, we saw him stand up against Colby in his last fight, but. It's definitely not the approach I feel like he should be taking in, uh, you know, in this fight if if they do book it, and you know it's kind of another question on there. You know, does Usman believe uh, too much in his hands after you know finishing Colby with, with his hands, and um, you know Col Colby's a volume guy. He doesn't use a lot of setups. He just kind of tries to overwhelm you with his volume. He doesn't you know hit the hardest. And so, you know, Usman was really able just to kind of sit on his back foot, throw a lot of power, and, you know, ultimately he, you know, hurt Colby late and, and got the victory. But, man, Jorge Masvidal is just on a completely different level with the stand-up. I mean, his entries, his feints, you, his kick, like, you don't know, you never know what's coming, whether it's going to be his left hand, his right hand, his kicks. Um, you know, he switches stances very well. If, you know, if he feels like he can't find the range in one stance, he switches it and has a, and it has way, way, way different, um, entries and combinations from both sides. So his striking, um, arsenal is so diverse. And so, you know, um, you know, just kind of the mindset of where Usman is after that. And obviously, you know, both guys, you know, if they do take this fight, they're both confident that they can beat the other guy even on a week's notice, which is 
freaking insane to me. It just is a testament to how mentally tough these guys are because, I mean, with the belt being on the line, um, with the late-minute replacement, like, this is, a, this is a, you know, not, um, not, uh, what would you call it, um, not, uh, you know, um, condi- these aren't conditions that you would normally want to take, uh, you know, a, a title fight on, you know, um, which kind of leads into my second question, which is, you know, uh, is this is this George's best route into getting what he wants out of the UFC in terms of pay and, you know, his contract? Um, you know, this might be the best way, you know, in, you know, in, uh, in MMA terms, is he backing the UFC up against the cage here where, you know, they don't really have any other options and they need, you know, somebody to really sell this pay-per-view card. But then at the same time, there's no other sports going on. And uh, UFC has had no problem getting viewership on even, you know, on on their, uh, I think on their, their Jessica I, uh, Cynthia Calvillo card, they did crazy numbers. Uh, I know that's not pay-per-view, but, you know, clearly with the lack of uh, conventional sports going on right now, UFC is really benefiting from all the eyes being on them, especially being on ESPN. Uh, um you know, a lot of people, even though there's no sports going on, they're still turn, tuning into ESPN, which is gathering more fans for the UFC just by their content being on there. So George is definitely betting on himself here. And, you know, if UFC does get him what he wants, maybe this is the best way for him too. But, man, it's just the, the stakes are crazy because if he loses, he gives all of the leverage back to the UFC. But if he wins, he literally takes all the chips, and now he's king of the mountain, which is, I mean, th- th- these are the kind of things that I love seeing going into a title fight. Not only the stylistic matchup, but again, we always talk about this as the stakes. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, the third question I have is, you know, both Jorge Masvidal and Gilbert Burns, they both train out of Florida, which is in the United States. So that means they would both be eligible to fight at the Apex Arena. So if for whatever reason, if the logistics of trying to get Masvidal out there, um, you know, in time to do all the COVID testing, all of his other testing that he needs to do, if it's too much, uh, do they rebook it? Do they or do they book Masvidal Usman on the 252 card, which you know was headlined by DC and uh, and Stipe? Which would make that, I mean, if you have both of those being your title fights and your main and co-main event, that, who right there, I mean, take my money, take it, please, God, that would be a great, great, great event. Um, and then, you know, or, or do they, do they just rebook the Burns fight and, you know, just hopefully he's, you know, hopefully, you know, COVID doesn't affect him too much and he gets over it, you know, rather quickly. I think, I want to say the, um, the 252 card is in, I think, like, August. I want to say August 15th. Um, so that would give him, you know, a little bit over a month. But, I mean, if he gets – if if he comes down hard with COVID, I, that, that, I definitely don't see that. And I guess, like, insurance and and, you know, just regulation-wise, you know, they, they probably would want to stay away from Burns or anybody in the Burns camp. Um, and – now thinking about it, him getting tested for co- or him coming down testing positive for COVID opens up a whole another a whole bunch of other questions about his whole team um, at Henry Hoof's gym. But you know we'll kind of keep this uh, centered in around the uh, Jorge Masvidal right now. So, um, but yeah, so obviously they wouldn't have to take those fights to Abu Dhabi, and they could do those fights in Las Vegas. So I uh, I, I wonder what they do. Um, ball is kind of in UFC's court right now and what they want to do. And if they really want to, if they want to gamble on giving this to George, cause again, if George wins, he, that's it. Like it, it's, it's off to the, it's off to the moon with that guy. I mean, if he can, if he beats Usman on a week's notice, I mean, I couldn't think of a better example of a fighter completely betting on himself to leverage the UFC. I mean, at that point, it, that's it. Um, so those are just kind of my initial thoughts. I'm still kind of trying to process this whole thing. And I'm sure once I finish this video, I'm going to be like, oh man, that should have included so much more. But, um, again, let me know what you guys think. Uh, first question, you know, who does this favor stylistically? Question two, is this George's best route to getting what he wants in terms of money and contract? And then question three, um, 
you know, do they, if they don't finish or if they don't book this for next weekend, do they rebook it for UFC 252? And do they do Maz at all or Burns? Cool, guys. Thanks. Let me know. And, of course, I immediately thought of what I forgot about. Guys, if you guys are combat sports fans at all, please um, listen to my podcast, The Call to Violence MMA Show. Uh, I do it occasionally on my own, but I usually have my buddy Mike Connerton uh, with me. We have some uh, fun debates and fun banter on MMA. So, yeah, if you guys like that, it's on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Once again, it is The Call to Violence MMA Show. Um, yeah, it's, we, I usually do uh, a weekly show. So if you guys want to tune in, thanks.